Hey, I'm Sarah, and I'm married to the most amazing guy, James. Not only is he a fantastic husband, but he's also an incredible stepdad to my daughter, Emily. James came into our lives when Emily was just five. Her biological dad, Tom, left us when she was a baby and has only been around sporadically since then, never really stepping up as a dad. When James showed up, it was like a breath of fresh air. Right from the start, he treated Emily as if she were his own. I remember when we first started dating, he'd bring little gifts for her. Nothing fancy, just sweet things like a book or a cute stuffed animal. It was obvious he was trying to connect with her, and it totally worked. Emily warmed up to him pretty fast. One thing that really stands out is how James supported Emily's love for ballet. She started taking classes when she was six and James never missed a single recital. He was always there, cheering her on, sometimes even getting a bit teary-eyed. He made sure she had everything she needed, ballet shoes, pretty tutus and even extra classes with a private tutor when she had a big performance coming up. When Emily was about nine, she had a big performance and she was super nervous. The day before, James took her to the park and they spent hours talking and practicing her routine. They even made up a silly chant to calm her nerves. That night, he stayed up late with her going over her steps until she felt confident. The next day, she nailed it, and I know it was because James was right there with her. But it's not just the big moments. James is always there for the day-to-day -day stuff, too. When Emily struggled with math in middle school, he'd sit with her every evening after work, helping her with her homework. Sometimes they'd be at the kitchen table for hours, and even though James was exhausted from work, he never showed it. He was always patient and never gave up on her. But as awesome as James has been, there's always been this lingering sadness when it comes to Emily and her biological dad, Tom. There were times when she'd ask about him, wondering why he wasn't around. And it broke my heart to see her like that. I remember one Father's Day when Emily made two cards, one for James and one for Tom. She asked if she could send the card to Tom, and of course I said yes. She never got a reply. The disappointment in her eyes felt like a punch to the gut. James has always been super understanding about it. He never tried to replace Tom, but made it clear he was there for Emily no matter what. On Emily's 13th birthday, she got a letter from Tom apologizing for being absent. She was so happy at first, but then weeks turned into months and she never heard from him again. The hurt in her eyes was hard to watch. James stepped up even more during those times, always reassuring her that she was loved and important. One Christmas, Emily got really down. She was hoping Tom might reach out during the holidays, but when he didn't, she was crushed. James noticed and did everything he could to cheer her up. He planned this elaborate Christmas scavenger hunt around the house with little notes and gifts hidden everywhere. By the end of it, Emily was laughing and smiling again, and that's just who James is. Always thinking of others, always putting Emily first. When Emily graduated from high school, James was the one who cried the most. He gave this heartfelt speech at her graduation party about how proud he was of her and how much he admired her strength. It was such a tearjerker that even Emily, who usually keeps it cool, couldn't hold back her tears. James made sure she had everything she needed for college, even setting up a fund so that she wouldn't have to worry about student loans. About a year ago, Emily announced her engagement to her longtime boyfriend, Mark, and it was a moment I'll never forget. We were all gathered for a family dinner at our place. 
a rare night where we all had the evening free. Emily and Mark had been together for years and we all loved him, so this was the natural next step. Emily waited until dessert to make her announcement. She stood up looking both nervous and excited and said, Everyone, I have some news. I saw James's eyes widen with curiosity. Then she held up her hand and there it was, a beautiful ring sparkling on her finger. Mark and I are getting married, she said. The room erupted into cheers and congratulations. James jumped out of his chair, his face lighting up like a Christmas tree. He hugged Emily so tight, I thought she might burst. The pride and happiness radiating from him were undeniable. He's always been so supportive of her and seeing her so happy just made his day. He shook Mark's hand and pulled him into one of those manly back-slapping hugs. James was the first to offer to pay for the wedding. We want to give you the best day possible, he said, looking at both Emily and Mark. Nothing but the best for our girl. Emily was over the moon and so grateful, hugging him again and thanking him endlessly. From that moment on, James was all in on the wedding planning. He was excited about every detail, wanting everything to be perfect for Emily's big day. We visited countless venues, tasted a ridiculous number of cakes and sat through endless meetings with florists and decorators. James was there every step of the way, offering his input but always making sure Emily's vision came first. A few months ago, Emily started reconnecting with her biological dad, Tom. It came out of nowhere. Suddenly, Tom wanted to be involved in her life now that she's getting married. I was pretty skeptical given his history, but Emily was excited. She'd always wanted a relationship with him, so I understood why she was giving him a chance. At first, it seemed fine. Emily was happy and it was nice to see her smiling about something that had caused her so much pain before. But then, her attitude towards James began to shift. It was subtle at first. She'd forget to invite him to important planning meetings or brush off his suggestions. Things she used to really value. James noticed too, but he didn't say anything. He's always been the patient, understanding type. One night we were all having dinner and Emily was talking about some new ideas Tom had for the wedding. James offered a suggestion and Emily cut him off mid-sentence, saying, Tom and I already decided on this, James. The look on James's face was heartbreaking. He just nodded and stayed quiet for the rest of the meal. There were other signs too. Emily used to ask James for help with things like fixing her car or going over her finances. But now she'd mentioned that Tom was handling it. I'd catch James looking a little lost, like he wasn't sure where he fits in anymore. He never complained, but I could tell it was getting to him. I decided to talk to Emily about it over coffee one morning. I gently brought up how she seemed a bit distant with James. I tried to be careful with my words, not wanting to upset her. Emily, honey, I've noticed you've been a little distant with James lately. Is everything okay? She looked at me a bit surprised and annoyed. Mom, you're overthinking it. I'm just busy with the wedding and reconnecting with Tom. It's a lot to handle. I didn't want to push too hard, but couldn't let it go either. I get that, but James loves you so much. He's done everything to make sure your wedding is perfect. It just feels like he's being left out. Emily said she appreciated everything James had done, but insisted that Tom is her real dad and she wants to give him a chance to be part of this. Her words stung. I knew she wanted to bond with Tom, but I also knew how much James had given her and how much he loved her like his own. 
I told her I understood, but I didn't want James to feel pushed aside. He's been there for her through everything. Emily brushed it off, saying she wasn't pushing him aside, just trying to balance things now that Tom was back. Things didn't improve after that conversation. If anything, they got worse. Emily started calling Tom dad in front of James, which she'd never done before. The first time was when we were all discussing seating arrangements for the reception. She looked at Tom and said, Dad, what do you think about this? James flinched just a tiny bit, but I noticed. He excused himself soon after, saying that he had work to finish. I tried to talk to James about it, but he brushed it off, saying he was happy Emily was reconnecting with her father. But I could see the hurt in his eyes. He'd spent years being the dad that Tom never was, and now it felt like he was being sidelined. Emily started spending more and more time with Tom, going out for lunch, having long phone calls, and updating him on every little wedding detail. James was still there, helping and supporting, but it felt like he was becoming a background character in a story where he used to be the hero. About a week ago during a family dinner, Emily dropped a bombshell that caught us all off guard. We were all sitting around the table enjoying a nice meal when Emily cleared her throat and said she had something important to discuss. I had a sinking feeling in my stomach but tried to shake it off and listen. Everyone, she started glancing at Mark and then at Tom, who had joined us for dinner. I've been thinking a lot about the wedding and the roles everyone will play. I've decided that I want Tom to have a significant role in the ceremony. The room went silent. James looked up from his plate, his face showing a mix of surprise and hurt. He quickly tried to hide it, but I could see how much Emily's words had hit him. I was shocked too. We all knew this could happen, but hearing it out loud was something else. Emily kept going, completely unaware of the tension that had just filled the room. I want my real father to walk me down the aisle. I think it's only right that Tom, my biological dad, has this special role. James looked like he'd been punched in the gut. For years, he'd been the one comforting Emily supporting her through every milestone. And now he was being pushed aside. I could see the pain in his eyes, but as always, he tried to be understanding. James took a deep breath and nodded, his voice steady but soft. If that's what you want, Emily, I'll support your decision. It was heartbreaking. Months ago, Emily had asked James to walk her down the aisle, and she'd been so excited about it, practically bouncing with joy. I remember her saying she couldn't imagine anyone else walking her down the aisle because James had always been there for her. He'd been over the moon, but now things were different. Emily was wrapped up in the idea of having her real father play this big role and she couldn't see how much it was hurting the man who had always been her dad in every way that mattered. I couldn't just sit there. Emily, do you realize what you're doing? James has been there for you through everything. He's the one who raised you and always supported you. Emily's expression hardened and she crossed her arms. Mom, I get that, but this is important to me. I want Tom to be part of my wedding. He's my biological father. I glanced at James, who was doing his best to keep his emotions in check. Emily, he said quietly, I understand wanting to include Tom, but this is a big change. Just think about how much this means, not just to you, but to everyone involved. She was clearly frustrated. I've already made up my mind. Tom is my dad and he should walk me down the aisle. End of discussion. After that, dinner continued in awkward silence. James tried to keep the conversation going. 
but the hurt in his eyes was obvious. I felt so helpless, watching the man I love being sidelined by the girl he's always seen as his own daughter. After a lot of thought and heartache, I finally decided to talk to Emily about the situation. It wasn't an easy decision, but I'd been watching James, who'd put so much into making sure everything was perfect for her wedding, slowly getting pushed aside in favour of her biological father, Tom. I felt like I needed to draw a line somewhere. I told Emily that if James wasn't going to be considered a father in this wedding, if his role was being replaced by Tom's, then we should reconsider his financial support too. I made it clear that the money James had put into this wedding wasn't just a financial contribution. It was a gesture of fatherly love and support. If he wasn't going to walk her down the aisle, then it seemed only fair to rethink his involvement. I know that might sound harsh, but I was feeling torn. James had been more than just a stepfather to Emily. He'd been her rock, her constant support. And now he was being sidelined. It felt like a betrayal to see him overlooked in favour of Tom, who had been mostly absent from Emily's life. When I first brought it up, James tried to talk me out of it. He didn't want to make things worse or cause more conflict. He always puts Emily's happiness first, even if it means enduring his own pain in silence. He told me we should focus on making her happy, no matter how much it hurt him. But I couldn't just sit by and watch anymore. Every day, I saw how much this was affecting James. His excitement for the wedding had turned into quiet resignation, and it was breaking my heart. I wanted Emily to understand what she was really doing, not just the symbolic gestures, but the real, tangible ways James had been a father to her. Despite James's protests, I went ahead and had the conversation with Emily. I sat her down and told her that if James was being pushed out of the father role in the wedding, then we'd need to reconsider his financial support too. I made it clear that this wasn't about the money, it was about recognizing the role James had played in her life. Emily was really taken aback by my decision. She seemed genuinely shocked and hurt, which wasn't what I was aiming for. I tried to explain that this wasn't about punishing her, but about making her understand that James's contributions weren't just financial. They were a reflection of his love, care, and deep commitment to her. If she wanted to change the narrative of her wedding to include Tom as a father figure, then it seemed only fair to rethink the role James had been playing in every aspect of the wedding. When I told Emily that James's financial support might be reconsidered if he wasn't going to have a role in the wedding, I never expected it to blow up like it did. Emily's reaction was intense and honestly pretty hurtful. She got really upset, accusing James of using his money to control and manipulate her wedding plans. It was shocking to see her go from being a loving daughter to feeling cornered and betrayed so quickly. The next thing I knew, Emily started spreading rumours among our family and friends, making James out to be some kind of villain. She claimed he was holding his financial support over her head to control how the wedding should go. It was so disheartening to see how quickly things spiralled. What should have been a simple discussion about family roles and contributions turned into a full-blown public dispute. This created a huge rift in the family. People started taking sides and the tension was thick. Some folks were sympathetic to Emily, wanting to include Tom more, while others felt James was being unfairly treated. I found myself caught in the middle, trying to defend James while also attempting to keep the peace. Amidst all the chaos, I asked Emily why she didn't ask Tom to help pay for the wedding if he was suddenly so important to her. 
I thought it was a fair question, especially since Tom had become such a big part of the wedding plans. Emily told me she had asked him, but he said he didn't have any money saved up for something like that. James was completely crushed by Emily's accusations, saying he felt betrayed and doesn't even cover it. After everything he had done for her, the last thing he expected was to be made out as the bad guy. His feelings were raw and it was heartbreaking to see someone he cared for so deeply turn on him like that. After a lot of soul searching, James made the tough decision to step back entirely. He decided he couldn't keep being involved in the wedding, emotionally or financially. It was his way of protecting himself from more hurt and making a statement about how deeply he'd been wounded. It wasn't an easy choice, but he felt it was the only way to maintain his dignity and sanity after everything that happened. The impact of James's decision was immediate and huge. Without his financial support, the wedding preparations turned into chaos. Emily had been counting on James's contributions to cover a big part of the costs. Now, with that funding gone, she was left scrambling to figure out how to make up the difference. The stress and pressure of trying to manage the wedding expenses on her own were overwhelming. In the end, Emily had to scale back a lot for the wedding. The beautiful venue she had her heart set on was the first to go. It was one of those dreamy places that looked straight out of a fairy tale. But without James's financial support, it was simply out of reach. She had to settle for a much simpler location. A few things were already paid for, including her dress, so at least that remained untouched by all the chaos. As the wedding day got closer, it became clear that James and I wouldn't be attending. The tension and hurt were just too much, and we felt our presence might cause more drama. We didn't want to add any more stress for Emily on her big day, so we made the tough decision to stay away. A few days after the wedding, Emily called us. That conversation was one of the hardest I've ever had. She told us we had ruined her wedding, saying our decision to withdraw support and not attend had cast a shadow over what should have been the happiest day of her life. Her words were harsh and full of hurt, and it felt like a dagger to the heart. Now, some of our relatives are siding with Emily, saying we should have just gone along with what she wanted to keep the peace. They think James and I overreacted and that family should always come first no matter what. It's tough feeling misunderstood and unsupported by people who should know the whole story. I'm posting this on Reddit because I need an unbiased opinion. AITA in this situation? Should we have paid for the wedding? Update one. Hi everyone, thanks for your comments. After reading your opinions, I truly believe that we have done the right thing. It's been a few months since the wedding and I wish I could say things have gotten better, but unfortunately they haven't. Emily still isn't speaking to James or me. It's like she's completely cut us out of her life and honestly, it's heartbreaking. I've tried reaching out to her multiple times, hoping we could have a calm conversation and work through everything, but she's been stubborn and unresponsive. To be blunt, Emily is being a brat. I know that might sound harsh, but I'm at my wits end. She's acting like a spoiled child who didn't get her way. And instead of trying to understand our perspective, she's digging in her heels and refusing to acknowledge how much she's hurt James. Every time I think about it, I get a mix of sadness and frustration. I understand that reconnecting with her biological father was important to Emily, but I can't wrap my head around how quickly she dismissed everything James had done for her. It's like she's forgotten all the sacrifices he made, all the times he was there for her, when Tom wasn't even in the picture. And now, because she didn't get her way, she's throwing a tantrum and cutting us out of her life? 
What's even more frustrating is how she's playing the victim to everyone who will listen. I've heard from a few relatives that Emily's been spreading her side of the story and painting us in the worst possible light. Some of our family members are even starting to believe her version of events, which only makes things more complicated. I feel like I'm constantly defending James and myself, trying to set the record straight. But Emily's influence seems to be stronger than the truth at this point. I didn't want to believe that Emily could be so selfish. But here we are. She's always been a bit headstrong, but this level of entitlement is something else entirely. It's like she expects the world to revolve around her, and when it doesn't, she lashes out and refuses to take responsibility for her actions. I am sorry, I'm going on and on and ranting, but I have never been so frustrated before, and this has given me an outlet to let all my feelings out. Update 2. Hi everyone, it's been a few months since my last update, and things have taken quite a turn. I'm not sure how to feel about what's happening, so... I figured I'd come here for some advice. So last weekend, Emily came over to see us out of the blue. Honestly, I didn't know what to expect since she's been so distant and cold since the wedding. When she showed up at the door, I was surprised but let her in because, well, she's still my daughter despite everything that's happened. After we sat down, Emily told me that she and Mark were in serious financial trouble. Apparently, she overshot her budget for the wedding by a lot. She maxed out her credit cards, and now she has debt collectors calling her constantly. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I mean, we all knew the wedding was expensive, but I had no idea she was stretching herself so thin. I asked her how on earth she could let this happen especially when she knew her financial limits. And that's when she hit me with it. She said it was our fault. She was expecting our help with the wedding and when we pulled out, it left her scrambling. My jaw practically hit the floor. Our fault? After everything that went down? After she pushed James aside and said those horrible things about him? It took everything in me not to lose my cool right then and there. James wasn't home at the time, so it was just me and Emily. I took a deep breath and I asked her, Why don't you ask your dear dad, Tom, for money? I know it was a bit snarky, but I couldn't help it. After all the pain she put us through for that man. She looked down and told me that she already did, and surprise, surprise, Tom refused. I shouldn't be shocked, but honestly... It still stings to see her so let down by him, even if part of me saw it coming from a mile away. Then she started begging. She said she didn't have anywhere else to turn and even said she'd be fine with a small loan that she'd pay us back. I could see the desperation in her eyes and that broke my heart a little. Despite everything, she's still my little girl and seeing her like this was tough. But at the same time, I couldn't just forget what had happened. The accusations, the way she treated James, it's all still fresh in my mind. I told her that a lot had happened, especially with her accusations, and that I needed some time to think about it. She seemed disappointed, but said okay and left. Now I'm stuck in this awful position where I have to decide what to do next. Part of me is worried about telling James I know he would jump at the chance to help Emily because not contributing to her wedding has been eating him alive. Even though he stepped back, I know it's been hard on him and I can tell he's still hurt by the whole thing. But another part of me feels like helping Emily right now would just be enabling her behavior. She needs to understand that actions have consequences. She can't just come running to us whenever she's in trouble, especially after the way she treated us. What do you all think? Should I tell James about Emily's request? Should we help her out? Or is it time for some tough love? Any advice or perspectives would be really helpful right now. Thanks in advance. 
update three. Hey everyone, just wanted to give you all an update on the situation with Emily. So after spending a lot of time mulling it over, I decided to tell James what had happened when Emily came by asking for money. I knew he'd have strong feelings about it and honestly, I was nervous about how he'd react. Well, as soon as I told him, James didn't even hesitate. He picked up the phone right then and there and called Emily. He asked her how much money she needed and when she told him the amount, I could see the shock on his face. It was a lot. We're talking more than just a little help. This was a significant sum. But without missing a beat, he told her to come home the next day to pick up a check. After he hung up, I asked James if he was really sure about this. I mean, after everything that's happened, after the way she's treated him, I wanted to make sure he wasn't just reacting out of emotion. I told him I'd understand completely if he didn't want to give her any money. But James, being the man he is, just looked at me and said, she's still our daughter and I love her, despite everything that happened. That hit me hard. Even after all the hurt, James still has such a big heart. He's always been the one to forgive easily, and I think that's one of the reasons I love him so much. The next day, Emily came by to get the check. I had spent the whole morning thinking about what I would say to her. I knew we couldn't just hand over the money without setting some boundaries. And when she walked in, it was a bit awkward at first, but we sat down and I laid it out for her. I told her clearly that this wasn't a handout, it's a loan and we fully expect it to be paid back as soon as possible. I needed her to understand that this wasn't just us bailing her out because she made some poor financial decisions. She needed to take responsibility. To my surprise, Emily said she understood. She didn't argue or push back. She just nodded and then out of nowhere, she hugged James and me. It was a moment that caught me off guard. Part of me wanted to melt into the hug and pretend like everything was fine. Like we were back to the way things used to be. But another part of me, probably the part that's been hurt so much by all this, couldn't shake the feeling that her intentions weren't entirely pure. I mean, I want to believe that Emily is genuine in trying to make things right, but I can't help but feel a little suspicious. After all, she hadn't spoken to us in months and not until she needed money. And while I know that as parents, it's natural to want to help our kids, I'm still struggling with this uneasy feeling that this reconciliation is more about the money than about truly mending our relationship. Maybe I'm overthinking, but something just doesn't feel right. As parents, we feel this responsibility to make sure Emily doesn't end up in financial ruin. And that's why we ultimately decided to help her. But I can't help but wonder if we're doing the right thing. It's hard to know where to draw the line between helping and enabling, especially when it's your own child. Thanks again for listening and offering your advice. It really means a lot to me to have this space to share. And get some outside perspective. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.